Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on the live stream with an update video here on this Tuesday evening, June 15th, 2021, uh, about 9.30 p.m. West Coast time here in California. And uh, taking a look at the globe, latest quake, a 2.5 striking out here in Hawaii, out in the middle of Pacific. Quite a bit of movement out there taking place throughout the Pacific Plate, West Coast, and also the uh, Dominican Republic area and Puerto Rico areas. We'll take a look at that here on the USGS map. Um, and we'll check out Yellowstone here in just a little bit. I was kind of checking that out. Um, West Coast, let's go ahead and begin with this area right here. I'm still kind of leaving an update or a uh, kind of earthquake watch out here for the West Coast. It's been up for a couple days due to the swarming uh, and the earthquake activity off the coast of Oregon. We haven't seen a whole lot of earthquake activity off the coast of Oregon today over the last 24 hours, but. Uh, West Coast, yes, all along the coastal range uh, through parts of the Sierra Nevada around Lake Tahoe once again. We mentioned that last night. We were looking for uh, uptick in earthquake activity throughout the Lake Tahoe area uh, and areas north due to the increase in earthquake activity off the west uh, off of the uh, coast range right here along the uh, Makama Fault Zone. And that's what's taking place. Nothing big, folks, but definitely a seismic increase in activity along the Sierra Nevada's uh, Lake Tahoe northward. Uh, there's some movement along the uh, fault systems around the Long Valley Supervolcano. Not, not volcanic, just uh, plate tectonic and general uh, pressure type of deal here in this region. Uh, also along the creeping section here, we're seeing a little increase in earthquake activity. Uh, and this is common, but we can see some earthquake activity uh, on, on the little bit larger size here. But uh, for now, 3.2 and uh, actually a bunch of twos popping off in that region over the last 24 hours roughly around that area where we would see the kilometer or the uh, earthquake take place at about seven uh about seven kilometers or so there's a shallow one uh, way up here to the north an aftershock it looks like uh, right around alum rock uh, millipedus area pretty shallow earthquake taking place here um, about 0.4 kilometers below surface so kind of watching the West Coast in general, folks. I um, mean, you know, you can take a you can take a view outside of the the zoom in map, right? And see the uh, dynamics here taking place along the West Coast. So earthquake watch still in effect out there. We are seeing some movement along the Garlock Fault structure. That's this sheer fault um, section right here. Way different compared to the, uh, you know, your typical uh, northwest to southeast movement. Nothing big, just a couple um, small microquakes around the region near Tehachapi and Ridgecrest. Uh, some movement up there as well. Looking down here to the south, um, some movement around Los Angeles, just to the east there. Um, Ontario, a little 1.0. Uh, overall, general activity in this region looks pretty quiet. It's this area down, I shouldn't say completely quiet, but it looks a little bit below average for earthquake activity on any given day uh, when it comes to the dynamics here in Southern California. Down here, not so much. We're still seeing a uh, swarm of activity around the salt and sea area. I'm not for sure where that, there we go. I, I don't know why, the, why these things disappear like that, the, the plate boundaries, they just disappear. I don't know if it's me or, or if it's just this option on the map where you can't see any closer than that, but uh, it is what it is. So looking at some of the movement here, uh, we'll zoom in. Of course, the uh, supposed San Andreas Fault ends here um, on this area, supposedly. Uh, and then it stretches into the uh, Brawley Seismic Zone, which ends uh, just south of Brawley. Uh, and then it renames into the Imperial Fault uh, structure. And the dynamics of this um, is the reason why the USGS renames these as separate individualized fault structure. But if you look at it on a whole, this is the plate boundary between the North American and Pacific plate, no doubt about it. Uh, whether there's a name, you know, a hundred different names here in this area. Uh, so looking at, at this region, zooming in, about 55 earthquakes or so, um, far as 2.5 and above, there is none. It's all below that, but it's still seismically active in here. A lot of people choose to ignore these microquakes, but they play a part. Look, Southern California is quiet. The swarm has calmed down. Beautiful. Okay, no. 
The swarm is still there. We're still very active into the Salton Sea area. The red quakes indicating uh, earthquake activity within the last hour. So you can see how many has kicked up just within the last hour here, folks. Uh, five or six or so. And still very broad earthquake range here stretching over the southern end of the Salton Sea area. And uh, still kind of stretching up towards the San Andreas Fault. Uh, there's a little microquake right there, 1.3. Let's go ahead and see if the professionals have reviewed it. No, they haven't. So they'll probably get rid of it and say it was just a uh, uh, cluster quake or a scattered, scattered. Uh, I, I can't remember the word people use for that, but uh, the scat, I, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see if they uh, remove those or not. Uh, but still definitely some activity taking place around the Salton Sea area and the areas to the south here as well. A little central to the west, a little swarm of activity kicking up here out in the desert. Uh, and some movement uh, around the border of uh, down here, Southern California, Mexicali area. Uh, let's go ahead and check out areas to the north, Intermountain West region, Idaho, Yellowstone. A little bit of activity over there. We'll check out the Yellow Yellowstone map here in a second. Not quite impressive. Um, a little bit of earthquake activity here at, check this out. Does anybody know this area without zooming in any closer? Right here, these guys have it set at uh, Prospect, Oregon. But would you be surprised what's there? Crater Lake. Beautiful lake, but volcanic. You could see at one time, man, this thing blew its top big time and uh, uh, left a crater pretty big. So a 1.4 earthquake right smack dab in the crater of Crater Lake. 4.3 kilometers below the surface. It's, it's something to watch considering all the earthquake activity we've seen at Mount Hood, Mount Rainier um, over the past few weeks or so. Uh, Mount Hood, a little bit of earthquake activity, nothing big. Swarming looks like it has died down. We're going to check the live maps here in a little bit. Mount St. Helens, pretty active as well. Um, some movement uh, taking place there. Sorry about that. I had to look at my security camera. I thought I heard people talking. Um, so a little bit of movement around the Mount St. Helens area as well. Right smack dab in the crater once again, folks. Uh, 4.7 kilometers below surface for a 0, zero. Okay. Uh, and then pretty shallow one for that 0.7. Uh, zooming up here around Mount Rainier. A little bit of activity outside of the park. Uh, and all er other areas look relatively quiet. Let's go ahead and check out um, the PNSN trimmer network and see what we could be looking at here. A lot of times when we see... Um, subduction here along the North American plate uh, in trimmer in the trimmer department we see an increase in earthquake activity uh, most of the time uh, tectonically in the volcanoes of the cas or the, the Cascade volcano range uh, and sometimes in Northern California as well uh, down here in the Northern California at the southern end of the Cascadia there's a little bit of trimmer there in the Sacramento Valley just south of Redding Anderson Corning area uh, and most of the activity there once again in Southern Oregon uh, southwest part of Oregon right there. Um, gonna have to watch this pretty closely. That's where we've seen some significant swarming take place for a couple weeks uh, in this region. I, I was talking hundreds, hundreds of trimmers a day. Today only 165, but it's something to watch pretty closely. Uh, far as the volcanic seismicity map, uh, I'll just check out Crater Lake. I don't normally check it because we just don't really see a whole lot there at the crater lake area but it is a volcano right let's see if we can see any seismic activity taking place on these live seismographs regardless if it's listed or not whoa okay that's come on <laughs> that is just overdoing it there okay there i there we go see that's i like it when it's set like this this is a perfect example perfect viewing of that earthquake that struck there at crater lake the sensitivity on this station here is what I look for uh, when it comes to picking up earthquake activity. That's going to be that earthquake. Um, let's go back and see if we can see it. Zoom back into the Crater Lake area. That's going to be that 1.4, right? 0555 UTC time. Um, 0555 is going to be right in here. UTC time over here. See that? So that is that earthquake showing up nicely, beautifully. Even though it's a small microquake, the sensitivity on this is set perfectly to monitor um, all types of earthquakes, including microquakes. Um, looks pretty quiet afterwards. Uh, some movement down here, not for sure exactly what that is. And then today, uh, over the last couple hours or so, it's, it's weird. They got it so amped up, you can't even see anything. 
Um, so I'm not for sure exactly what's going on with that, but I will monitor that station. Uh, but far as yesterday's activity, it looks pretty quiet there, except for that earthquake, right? Uh, there at Crater Lake. Uh, let's see what other volcanoes we're looking at. Uh, Mount St. Helens. I want to check these all. Uh, definitely a little bit of movement there at Mount St. Helens. And some of these stations here are kind of hard to access. Um, I've tried these before. Oh, there we go. Cool. There's another one specifically right there. Localized earthquake. And sensitive, sensitivity looks really good on this. As far as you, if you can't imagine, you know, a um, seismic meter needle doing that wavy line, so to speak. Of course, if you zoom in, you can see it a little bit more clear. Right? See, you can see that little waviness. But that's what it's supposed to look like when you're monitoring earthquake activity. That's what I like to see because you can see all these little microquakes right there. That, that's pretty good. Uh, let's check out the previous day. Uh, looks good as well. As um, far as the uh, sensi sensitivity goes, there's another localized earthquake. A couple smaller ones. Uh, some right there. Um, these wavy lines are indicative of a very distant earthquake. Um, very distant. It could be halfway around the world, but I'm not for sure what took place right around that time. Um, but that was uh, when it was that was yesterday. But far as uh, any any type of major earthquake activity in the volcanoes, there looks pretty quiet, folks. Just some microquakes. No vol volcanic uh, uh, tremor or harmonic tremor that I can see here in the uh, volcanoes. Uh, Mount Rainier. Let's go ahead and check them out uh, or check it out real quick. Do, do, do. Let's see here. Come on. There we go. So this one's still having a little bit of earthquake swarming, it looks like. Some of these uh, localized earthquakes. Of course, Mount Rainier, we've been looking at this station for a while, and it's looked like this for quite some time. Um, so either they're having one heck of an earthquake swarm, or uh, you know, I'm not for sure exactly what. It, it looks like earthquakes. To me, those look like localized earthquakes, not interference whatsoever. But it's not listed as having um, that many earthquakes on here. Yes, there is a few. You can see all these throughout the, when is it, last uh, two weeks or so. So it's possible. Maybe it is. Maybe, you know, maybe there's a few that they're missing there at Mount Rainier. But, uh, you know, they're listing them. And they're scattered throughout the crater and also areas to the north and to the southeast. Uh, and most of that was all about two weeks ago. Well... Probably more than two days ago. Uh, I'm guessing about three days, three days ago or so. But uh, yeah, just kind of um, you know seismically active there in the um, volcanoes of the Cascades. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. There was a little bit of movement that I seen being picked up on the USGS station. They listed up here um, on the all magnitudes map, and these are very small, very small microquakes. But there's a number of them, and most of these. If you look at if you look at the time, most of these are uh, oh about an hour or so apart, a couple hours or so, and they're northwest of Lake Yellowstone. So over here along the park, I look over here and I just I just don't see it. I mean, well, yeah, okay, there we go. There's a couple of them. Sometimes you know what? Sometimes it takes these the guys at USGS days to list them even sometimes they don't even list them and it's possible a lot of those that were listed on the map are, are in here somewhere scattered in that mess and i'm not for sure exactly what created that mess because uh, it's showing up all across the stations up here it could be wind interference does not look volcanic um hopefully um but i haven't checked the weather up there but it, to me a lot of times wind does create events like that on the seismic meters uh, just something to watch for sure. I'm not seeing that type of um, signal or that uh, type type of signature on other stations. Maybe down there, yeah, the promontory. Seeing that as well. But I think if this was volcanic, we'd see. Uh, oh, it might be a little bit different, a, a lot different looking than what we're seeing right there. A little bit more uh, broader, and then stopping for a little bit, and then broader, and then stopping. This here kind of looks like wind events taking place here. Uh, solar weather, folks. Uh, there is some activity to discuss there in the solar weather department. Um, looks like June 16th, June 17th, tonight, tomorrow night. Um, G1 class storm looks like a little bit of activity there on the KP index kicking up uh, to possibly a 5. KP index of 5 right there with that red one. 
Um, I'm guessing it's from the coronal hole. I haven't read this yet. Yep, look at that. Pretty dynamic, or uh, dynamic. There we go. Um, I got corrected on my word interesting earlier. Okay, interesting. Sometimes I say interesting. Interesting, I get it. You're absolutely right. I had to comment on that. It was funny that somebody just commented on one of my videos uh, a couple hours ago about that. So, um, ginormous, is that a word? Let me make sure I make sure I break out my dictionary so I can be proper, right? So I gotta be proper here or else I will be corrected. Okay, um, coronal hole, definitely coronal hole uh, facing Earth's solar wind stream flowing from these zones should reach Earth within the next few days. Therefore, the uh, of course, the alerts, not alerts, but uh, you know, the geomagnetic storm uh, forecast there. Potential 25% for the mid latitudes over the next couple days, 60% for the higher latitudes um, over the next couple days there. So a little bit of sunspot activity ro rotating around, uh, but this thing here will provide us with some uh, solar wind for quite a while. It's pretty huge, uh, pretty big there, uh, but not the biggest one I've seen, just an increase in speed density and the uh, looks like temperature uh, went way up as well from that wind speed coming in at us. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, have a good night. Still stay safe out there. Watch the West Coast. You know, it's still pretty active. Uh, Hawaii, not super active, folks. Just uh, 2.5 out there right now, or at least within uh, the last earthquake here on the globe. But, uh, you know, just pay attention to the West Coast. We're still looking pretty active out there with the swarming and the, uh, the cascades in the northwest there with their uh, tectonic earthquake activity taking place up there. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat to you tomorrow sometime. Stay safe. Peace.